The reason why so many people struggle with their money is because they don't have any plan or system of what to do with their money when they get paid. From now on, when you get paid on your payday, there's three things that I want you to do. I want you to automate, I want you to organize, and then I want you to grow. Let's start by talking about automate because now what happens when so many people get paid is they make money, they pay taxes, they spend their money, and then they wonder where all their money went. Instead of doing that, I want you to be proactive with your money, and that starts by opening up three different bank accounts. So what I want you to do is almost create a funnel. You've probably seen me talk about this before if you've been subscribed to the Minority Mindset YouTube channel, but I want you to create something like this. A 75-15-10 plan, which says that for every dollar that you earn from here on out, it's gonna be divided up into three different parts. 75 cents, is the maximum that you can spend, 15 cents is the minimum you should be investing, and 10 cents is the minimum that you should be saving. And you wanna automate this. This is why you wanna have at least three different bank accounts, and one of these bank accounts could potentially be an investment account, but I'll get to that in just a little bit. But what you wanna do is have three different accounts, where now, as soon as you get paid, you want an automatic transfer to happen that will take some money out of your checkings account where you get paid and put some money into a bank account for your investment dollars. This could be outside of the bank. Again, I'll get to that a little bit later in this video. And then you wanna take 10 cents out of every dollar that you earn and move that money automatically to a savings account. Most banks should be able to do this at no additional cost. If your bank can't do it, then you might wanna consider moving banks, but most banks will allow you to do this type of automatic transfer. If you can't automatically do it and you can't find any other alternative, then maybe you'll have to manually do it for a little while until your bank can get up to speed. But most banks will allow you to do some sort of automatic transfer like this, where anytime you get paid, you can move money automatically from one bank account to the other. The reason why you wanna have separate bank accounts is so your money is organized, that way you know which money you can spend, which money is supposed to be invested, which money is supposed to be saved, that way you don't accidentally spend the saving money on a car, that way you don't accidentally spend this investment money on a TV. This saving money is your money for an emergency. If somebody breaks their arm, your window breaks, your AC goes out, that's what this savings money is for. This investment money is the money that you use to grow. This is the money that you're gonna be investing in your wealth. This is what will make you actually wealthy. This is there to protect you against an emergency. This is the money that you wanna spend on. So if you wanna buy a car, you wanna buy things, you wanna pay for your groceries, that's this money. And you can put some of this money aside if you wanna make a bigger purchase, but this is the money that you're living off of. This is the money that you're gonna become wealthy with. This is the money that you're putting aside to protect yourself with. And now, this money, your savings money, there's a limit to how much money you're gonna save. Like if you've seen my videos, you understand that you don't want it to save your money forever because when you save your money, your savings are losing value to inflation. And so you wanna be strategic here with how much money you save. And ideally you wanna save somewhere between three months to 12 months worth of expenses. Now I know that's a huge range and this is gonna depend on you, your lifestyle and where you are in your life right now because if you are single, you don't have kids, you don't have any financial responsibilities, maybe you only need a few months worth of savings put aside because you can take on a whole lot more risk. If you're married and you have kids and you don't like the idea of taking on a whole lot of risk, then maybe you have nine months or a year's worth of savings put aside, that way you don't have to take on all the risk, you have more cash put aside. Now of course, again, this savings are not gonna make you wealthy. This is there just to protect you against an emergency, but once the savings account is full, that's when you wanna stop saving money and start investing this money instead. So now, anytime you get paid, you wanna have your money start flowing down the system. You want this to be automatic, that way you don't have to worry about it, but of course, if your bank can't allow you to automate it, then you wanna manually do this. But now, what you're doing is anytime you get paid, you're dividing up the money. You know which money can be spent, you know which money needs to be invested, you know which money is gonna be saved, and if you already have a big enough savings account, instead of saving it, this money is going to be invested as well. Once you've automated this, the next thing that you wanna do is you wanna organize. And the first thing, when you wanna organize is you gotta understand how to actually spend your money because now just because you have $100 in your account doesn't mean that you can afford to buy a $100 pair of shoes. And you gotta understand now the difference of being able to buy something and being able to afford something because they're two completely different things. In our society right now, you can pretty much buy whatever you want, thanks to the help of lines of credit and debt, and of course, buy now, pay later, which means you can have little money in your bank account and buy some very expensive stuff. 
But just because you can buy it doesn't mean that you can afford it. So now the first thing that you want to do if you want to really become wealthy is when we're talking about liabilities, things that don't make you any money, things that don't put any money in your pocket, things that make you look cool and rich, but they're really just making somebody else rich. For those things, you want to follow something like my rule of five, which says that if you can't buy five of them, you can't afford one of them. Now, this doesn't apply to everything. This is not going to apply to your home. This is mainly applying to those non-necessary liabilities. And then based off of how aggressive that you want to be, you can apply this rule of five to many other things in your life. But this is where you have to understand and create some discipline for yourself. That way you don't just spend money just because you have it and understand when you can actually afford to buy something. Like if you want to go out and buy a $1,000 iPhone because it's a new iPhone and you want to own it. Well, if you want to buy the $1,000 iPhone, you want to have at least five grand in your account. That way you can buy that iPhone and not have to worry about the price. And you're going to say, but Jaspreet, why would I want to actually spend all $1,000 when I can just finance it for $45 a month and not have to worry about any APR? Because when you do that, you get sucked into the system. It's not just $45 a month, it's $45 a month for the rest of your life. Because then what happens is anytime you get a new phone, you're going to be upgrading. And now you're sucked into this new monthly payment where if you just have the money, you can afford it, buy it, never have to worry about the price again. Now you can own this phone for a much longer time. It's a very different mindset where now you're understanding how to spend your money that we don't get sucked into these traps where you're playing what I call the payments game where every bill that you have just becomes a new payment and every month your money is being earned today to pay off all the things that you bought yesterday. Instead of stressing about it, use your money to buy things that you can afford today. Second, the next thing that you want to do when it comes to organizing is just taking a piece of paper. And I talk about this a lot, but I really just trust me on this. Take a piece of paper or use an Excel sheet, a Google sheet, write down on the top how much money you're making and where this money is coming from. So if it's you and your spouse, if you have multiple streams of income, just write down how much money you made last month. Write that on the top. Then below that, on the expenses, write down all of your different expenses. Write down how much money you spent on your credit card, where that money went, break it down by line item. It's going to be a little bit of a pain the first time you do this, but write down all the different expenses that you had and now see how much income that you had and how much your expenses were, how much money did you give away, how much money did you invest, how much money did you save. Write it all down so it's all there in front of you and now you can get a real picture of what's going on with your money, where your money is going and where your money is coming from. Once you understand this, all of a sudden, I can promise you this happens every single time. All of a sudden you are going to find new ways to find more money because you're going to find ways to spend less money because you're going to see a lot of expenses that you didn't know that you had or that you didn't need or that you really overpaid on. And now for the next month, you can start cutting those out. You can see different ways that you can earn more money potentially if you have multiple different streams of income and you can see where your money needs to grow. But you can't do any of this unless you can actually see your money. In business, you have to understand the numbers, that way you can optimize it. It's the same thing here. If you don't see the numbers, there's no way for you to optimize the numbers. And it's a very simple solution that doesn't really need any coaching because as soon as you see the numbers in front of you, it's gonna be very apparent. It's gonna be staring at you in the face with all the different opportunities that you have to have more money in your account. Spend two hours putting this together in the next weekend and I guarantee you, you're gonna get a great return on the time that you invested into this. The third point, and this is where things really get fun, is now on the growth side. How can you grow your wealth and how can you grow your income? Because now your wealth is gonna be built right here with your investments. And what you're gonna realize is this stuff can be fun. And what you'll also see is if you have more money coming into your pie, if you have more money coming into your funnel, you have more money to go towards your investments. But now you also have a system because you've already automated it. You know how to organize it. You have a system of understanding how to put your money to work. Once you understand that, now you understand the system. You can put your money to work. And if you have more money coming in, now you know how to use this money in the most impactful way possible. Now, let me start with this. If you do want to learn specifically how do you actually invest your money, how you put your money to work, how you invest your passive income, my team and I have put together a free guide that walks you through how to do this. If you want to read the guide and see how you can start investing with as little as $100 and see step by step what you can do, you can read the guide for free. And I'll put that guide for you down in the description below. But this is where now you have to understand. Let's start with this. What can you do with this investment money? Because at the base stage, if you're struggling with credit card debt, if you have consumer debt, if you have these hard money loans or the buy now, pay later loans that you're struggling to pay off, the first thing that you want to do with this money is not put this money into the market, not try to buy a rental property, but rather use this money to actually pay down that debt. 
because these high interest loans that are costing you 12, 15, 20, 25 percent a year are a much better return than if you put your money in the market and you try to get a seven or eight percent return a year. So if you invest your money, you're trying to get a seven to 10 percent return a year. When you can pay down your credit card debt, you're getting a guaranteed 15 percent return a year. This stock market real estate return is not guaranteed. It comes with risk. This paying off your credit card debt is guaranteed and you have a better pay down because you're getting a 15% return because if your credit card is charging you 15% a year and you pay off your credit card debt one year early, it's a guaranteed 15% return on your money. So this high interest debt is skinning you alive financially and the first thing you wanna do with this money is you wanna use this cash to pay down your credit card debt. So you wanna put this cash into a separate bank account and now you know you have this high interest debt this money is going to be used to pay down your credit card debt and all the other high interest loans as fast as possible. Then once you pay down this high interest debt, this is where now you can start asking yourself the question of what do you want to do with this money? You can invest this money into stocks. You can invest this money into real estate. You could potentially invest some of this money into cryptocurrency. I do recommend you have some stable investments as well, not just cryptocurrency. You can invest this money into your own business. You can invest this money into startups, or you can also invest this money to pay down some of your low interest debts, things like maybe your car payment or your mortgage, depending on your lifestyle and your risk tolerance and the type of goals that you have in your life. Starting with investing your money into some of the traditional asset classes, stocks or real estate, you have multiple different ways that you can invest your money here. You can start to see why it gets so complicated because at its root, becoming wealthy is simple. You spend less than what you make and you invest the difference. That is the formula to becoming wealthy. Then you can get a little bit more granular and you can dive deeper depending on what your interests are. So now we talk about stocks and real estate. Well, at its core, the simplest way that you can invest in something like the stock market is a completely passive system. Where now, anytime you get paid, instead of opening a separate bank account, you open an account with something like M1 Finance. So M1 Finance is a partner. They're an affiliate of Minority Mindset. I use M1 Finance for my passive investing. If you want to learn more about them, I'll put the link down in the description. But do your own research. There's a bunch of different companies out there. So you can use something like M1 Finance. And now what you do is you set up a direct deposit where now anytime you get paid or every week or whatever your system is, money will automatically leave your checking account. And now it's going to be automatically invested into your portfolio of ETFs or stocks or whatever it is that you want to own. So you can find some funds, ETFs or index funds or stocks that you want to own. And now anytime you get paid, this money will automatically be withdrawn from your bank account and then it will be invested into this portfolio that you have and it's completely passive and it doesn't cost you a penny to do that. I have a system for me where every Wednesday I have money that leaves my checking account and it's automatically invested into my portfolio of ETFs through M1 Finance. That's a passive and simple way to get started and it's completely automatic. Now, if you want to get more granular, you want to get more advanced, you want to invest in individual companies, this is where now you can open an account with a different type of brokerage where now you're going to be investing in individual companies. I do this as well. I haven't been doing it as much recently because I've been investing a lot more money into my own companies. But when you do this, now what you're doing is you're looking for good companies at a good price. And this requires more research. But now you're reading the earnings calls. You're listening to what the company is doing. You're paying attention to the numbers. You're reading the actual financials and then you're finding good companies. Then once you find a good company, you're looking for a good buying price. And then that's when you can come in and buy in phases where you want to buy a good company at a good price. You can see how it starts to get more involved. And this is where you can decide how involved you want to be. And if you want to invest in stocks, you want to invest the passive way or the active way. Likewise, you might say, you know what? I want to invest in real estate. Well, now, just like with stocks, you have multiple ways to invest in real estate. You have more of a passive way and an active way. I invest my money in physical real estate. This is where now you're going out and you're buying actual properties whether it's a home or an apartment complex or an office building, you're buying real estate and then you're going to rent it out. Now it takes a lot more time, takes a lot more work, takes a lot more capital to do this, but you can get good returns, but it is a lot more intensive. On the alternative, if you want to invest in real estate, you want exposure to real estate, but you don't want to have to deal with all the headache of actually managing and dealing with the properties yourself. Well, then the next best thing is using a real estate crowdfunding site or using some sort of real estate fund to invest your money where you're getting exposure to real estate. Now with this, you can start investing with typically as little as a hundred or a thousand dollars. And I can get exposure to real estate funds without actually having to manage the real estate. It's the same with cryptocurrency. You can invest passively or you can invest actively. And you gotta understand how important this is in your portfolio. For me, I invest in cryptocurrency, 
but it's a smaller piece of my portfolio. I invest in my own business and startups. I invest in real estate, I invest in stocks, I invest in cryptocurrency, and then I invest in physical gold. These are my order of investments, and these are the five places that I invest my money. Now you can understand now what are the different places that you want to invest your money and how big is each investment in your investment portfolio. And this might change with time. Your interests will change and what type of things you want to invest in will change and the opportunities in the markets might change, but just understanding how to invest your money and the different places that you want to put your money to work because these type of investments are gonna give you the biggest returns for you to actually become wealthy. But now you might say, you know, before I actually go out and invest my money, I'd rather just pay down some of my debt because to me, that is a better investment. I don't like the idea of putting my money in the market. It's too risky for me, fine. And now this is where you can make that decision of taking this money to pay down your home, to pay down your car. This way you have no debt. And then when you have no debt, you have less risk. Now you can take this other cash that you're investing after you pay down all of your debt and then start investing your money. And this is where, again, you gotta understand your lifestyle and your goals and the risk tolerance that you have. If you're okay taking on risk, if you wanna live big, if you wanna have more cash flow, if you wanna do more grand things, you're gonna have to take on more risk. That means more investments of actual putting your money to work. If you don't want all these nice things, if you're okay living small, if you just wanna be free and comfortable and not have to stress about money, and you don't wanna take on a lot of risk, then don't take on more risk. Just work to pay down your debt because that's much less risk. Less risk, less potential return. And this is where you have to understand how your lifestyle is aligning with what you're doing and your goals financially. And this is where you wanna understand how do you actually grow? Because now when you're putting this money to work, this is where the real wealth is built. And once you start understanding this and you start putting the system into play, this is where then you can make the next decision of how can you actually grow the pie? Because right now we've been just optimizing the pie that we have. We've optimized and grown, we've organized and we've automated this current pie with the income that you have. Now the next question might be, all right, I wanna now take this to the next level. How do I now 10X the income that I have, that way I have more money coming in here, that way I have more money to invest, more money to spend, more money to save. And you might say, Jasper, how in the world am I gonna go from 40,000 to $400,000 a year? How in the world can somebody like me 10x my income and maybe at your current job you can't but maybe the opportunity is there if you start looking for it and this is where now you have to first believe that it's possible but then start putting in the work to understand how you can earn more money maybe it's doing some things outside of a job maybe you're starting a side hustle maybe you're starting a side business maybe you're doing something else on the side that way you can earn more money but now this is where you have to understand again what are you doing with the money that you earn if you're just taking the money that you earn and you're spending all of it well now, you're not getting that much value from the money that you're earning. Sure, maybe you're getting some nice stuff, but that stuff leaves, and that stuff loses value. Because now if the income goes away, you have a whole bunch of stuff, but you have no wealth to show for it. And this is where you have to remember now, if you're working to earn more money, you want every dollar that you earn from now on to flow through this funnel. That way you have money to invest, you have money to spend, you have money to save. And the nice thing is, the more money you make, the bigger you can live. That's what you're spending piece of this pie is. But you're also paying yourself first. This is what the investment is. When you pay yourself, this is how you become wealthy and you're also protecting yourself. This is from worst case scenario type of situations. You're protecting yourself from emergencies that we are always taking care of because the whole idea here of being financially free, of being wealthy, is that you can capitalize on any opportunities that come your way and you're also taken care of in all stages of the economic cycle because we've all heard of people who've become incredibly wealthy at the top of an asset cycle or at the top of an economic cycle, but then lose everything when you're at the bottom. You don't wanna be going through these emotional roller coasters, which is why you want to have the proper financial system in place to take care of you, and it starts by automating, then you gotta organize, and then you gotta grow the whole funnel. If you have $10,000 with a credit card debt, you should not be spending money on your credit card right now. If you have any sort of credit card debt, you should not be spending money on your credit card. Now you might hear that and say, but Jaspreet, I heard that you love spending money on your credit card and that you only use a credit card. You're right. I love using a credit card. I only use a credit card to make my transactions.